Yo, what's going on, everyone? How we doing? It's Chase. Uh, so this week we will talk about uh, Adam Cosmos. We'll do FTM. Uh, we'll take a look at Luna, AVAX, F, BTC, uh, the usual things we've been looking at lately. Um, as usual, this video is sponsored by Prime XBT. Big shout out to them. Check out my links at the bottom. Um, as usual, none of the things in this video are financial advice. Uh, get yourself a financial advisor. Uh, I'm just sharing what I'm doing. And that's it. So, all right, let's get right into it. First thing, uh, active trade right now on Atom. Um, I was talking about Atom back when it was right around here, uh, and it was doing its fourth test of resistance. So it, let's let's explain that. You know, um, price comes down right, and it, it creates a resistance level. Because one of my tweets was talking about uh, fourth test of resistance. So I'll explain what I mean. All right, so resistance forms. We come up first test of resistance, second test of resistance, third test of resistance. Typically on the fourth test of resistance is when you get your breakout. So right when we were around here, uh, I put out a poll that, you know, asking basically is Adam going to cuck us again or are we going to have incoming gains? Uh, I said my vote was incoming gains. Um, uh, you know, slightly cryptic, I suppose, but if you didn't understand, uh, that meant I was getting along. Um, I was already half in, and then I added more once we started moving along. Um, in my opinion, the target for this is this liquidity area over here. We have all these highs just built up, right? A lot of chop that we could wipe out in just one swift move. Um, I don't think that we should be getting a full-on retest of 32. Um, when something's really bullish, or 33 here, when something is supposed to be really bullish and start moving, uh, I don't want to see a full retest. I want to see some consolidation in here. Um, maybe, worst case scenario, you get some consolidation in here, and then you sweep, and then you go, and now uh, you're going to wipe out all this liquidity here, uh, and I'm looking to take profit right in this area right here, uh, between this resistance and this liquidity level right here, this high. So this is my take profit area. Uh, I am currently in long in this one. And I'm not looking to see it do a full retest. I, I don't think that would be very bullish. But knowing Adam, it is possible. Uh, it could literally go down and do some bullshit and, and then still come out. Uh, my stop is towards the lower end here. Um, I'm probably getting, let's see, I hopped in around here, stops around here. I'm looking for about two risk reward, I think I had it at. So yeah, maybe it's a little bit tighter. Uh, but yeah, it's somewhere around here, somewhere around two risk reward. That's what my setup somewhat looks like. Um, and yeah, that's a, that's about it for Adam. Uh, I think the breakout is pretty clean. I think it was the, you know the fourth test, as I said, um, and then we were also seeing you know good good consolidation uh, in here and just obvious you know multiple tests, right? Typically, before you got you know you had this test right here, which you had like strong bullish, uh, strong bearish divergence here, uh, and then you were obviously way over you know, overbought on RSI going into here. And then here you were barely even, you know, pushing overbought conditions until the breakout occurred. And you could also see the difference on the uh, four hour between previous closes and how this one was acting. So look at this, you never got a close above, never got a close above, never got a close above. Look at that, look at that retest. So four hour closes out, perfect retest goes. Could have even got, I probably could have got a lot better risk reward on this, but knowing Adam, I'm just very, um, I'm very skeptical of how Adam moves, and I just wanted to play something wide. Uh, you know, like I said, two risk reward is fine with me. So, yeah, that, that's basically Adam in a nutshell. Let's move over to FTM. Okay, FTM. Um, I'm seeing, I think, you know, liquidity above here. My plan, I, I tweeted this as well, is to basically short uh, this liquidity grab. I'll probably do half in as blind asks and then half on the reclaim so what that means is basically you could be you could just leave your whole short right here you know and have a stop say somewhere around somewhere around here ish probably um that you could do or you know and but you take a full you know minus one r risk right if you get stopped out um or you could do half your risk here and then another half risk here. So you'll have slightly smaller position size, but you'll have a bit more confirmation on this retest level right here. And my target is simply this low right here. 
Okay, so a little sweep of a little sweep of this and a little sweep of that, and then who knows? Maybe it goes. I, I don't know what it does from there. It's not really my concern. But um, other thing I'd be looking for is just this bearish divergence to continue. Already sort of building. You know, you have equal highs here for the most part, part, but you're making so you're making equal highs in the RSI, but you're having higher highs on the price. So if you get this one, this next one, and it looks like this. You know, it comes down and it's a lower high, right? So now you have a lower high on the RSI, but you're continuing to make higher highs on price and you're also sweeping liquidity at the same exact time. In my opinion, that's a good short to this other side liquidity. And that's what I'm trying to play on FTM. Okay, looking at Luna. Uh, Luna, I'm remaining patient. I would like this area. Um, that's it really. I'm looking to buy around you know, you had your previous resistance here, resistance here, and then you develop sort of a base in here. You close into resistance, you close into resistance, all, all these candles are closing into resistance, and then you have your sort of origin of your impulse up right here. So this is where I'm looking to buy. Um, maybe we get it, maybe we don't, I, I don't know. You know, there's always going to be a lot of people who are saying, oh, no way we're going that low, no way this, no way that. You know, people said the same thing when I was talking about Ethereum and we were at 4,400 and I said, I'm looking to buy uh, 3,500. And everyone said, no way, not possible, not possible. So all, all these are, are just plans. I'm, I'm just preparing, you know, I, I got my bid set. And if we get some type of a nuke day and I get filled and I get an insta bounce, hey, that's, that's good money and I'm happy with that. So these are my levels for uh, Luna. Uh, AVAX, same thing. AVAX, I'm just being patient. I want to see somewhere between Somewhere around here, I think is good. Somewhere between 95 and 90 is really my optimal levels. I'd like to buy in there. Uh, probably have some, you know, people ask me to, uh, you know, I think someone was asking me about fibs. We'll probably have some good 618 or 705 confluence in here. Yeah, look. So the 618 is right at, at right around $95.5 and your 0.705 is right around 90. So right in this area is sort of our pocket, right? You have the golden pocket in there too with the 0.65. Uh, but th this is sort of our area, right? Previous resistance, and now we have all these different signs that say, you know, this area should be a good place to buy. So once again, got my bid set, 90 to 95, 96, this whole area right in here. That's what I'm looking for on AVAX. Moving forward to ETH. Um, I'm going to couple ETH and BTC here together and just say that um, the reality is that coins are moving a lot more and ETH and BTC, people are caring less and less about them. And this is something I talked about in my going into 2022 strategy video. That's my last video. If you haven't seen it, go check that out. Um, personally, me as well. I'm caring less and less about what BTC and ETH are doing. Why, why do I want to trade, you know, fucking coins that move 0.2% every single day when I could be trading these volatile uh, alt pairs, these L1 pairs with tons of liquidity? Um, look, you know, if, if you're trading multi-million dollars, maybe there's not a, maybe there's not enough liquidity for you. But I doubt that's any of the people who watch my videos. So uh, I'm very interested in trading these alts. I, I think that's the best place to be right now, and I'm not much concerned with ETH or BTC. Um, if I had to mark out some levels on ETH, I would say there's a clear level here, right around 3,200. Uh, but I also think that this is still a level that will be. Uh, will provide support, right? It's support until it's not. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. Then, oh, you know, it's it's support until it's not. It's supported here, it's supported here, it's supported here. It, it could support price another 20 times if it wanted to. It really doesn't matter. It's support until it's not. So if it does break down, you know, I wouldn't short this or anything. If it does break down, I'm looking for a long around 3150, uh, 3160, whatever that number was. And otherwise, uh, this is support until it's not. Simple as that. If you get some type of a major sweep and a reclaim, that could be a potential long position. I'd be watching for something like that. Let's take a sip of water. And moving into Bitcoin, uh, once again, we could see, you know, the confluence of this level. Resistance, 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 and, and somewhat forming a base in here, right? And then you have, once again, support causes the up move support and i you know expect that it would be support again it's support until it's not 
Ah, uh, that's really it. If we come down and we flip this area to resistance, that's not a good sign and probably headed towards this area once again, this, this low 30 area. Yeah, right in, right in here, around 30K. Uh, but I'm not necessarily seeing that at the moment. Uh, hopefully we just fill this, maybe even sweep this low, and uh, that's your reclaim, and I wanna see us get back towards 53 to 58. This, this is my uh, area of where I'd be looking to sell, take profits, whatever you wanna say. Um, and hey, you know, if we flip this area back to support, then that means we're most likely pretty bullish again. Okay, so we take it one level at a time. There's no need to, you know, I, I never understood this whole thing where people are trying to look fucking six months out. Like, I get it. Some There, there are major gains and some of the best gains are to be made by simply holding, you know, long term. But in my opinion, you know, you've had a major move here, right? You've had a major move all the way from 3,000 to fucking 70,000, you know, 68,000. This is not the place where I need to be, you know, accumulating some huge bag for for the run to for the run to 400,000 like, you know, some people talk about it. It's ridiculous. I'll play it along the way if if that's the way it's going to be, but I'm not going to be uh, you know, accumulating a bag at, at this price. Uh, if it does come down, I'll play some short-term trades, you know, maybe short-term spot bag, play the bounce towards there, something of that nature, but but no need to go overboard. It's as simple as that. Who knows? Could range for a long time. Uh, anyone who says that they know exactly what's going to happen six months from now is, is crazy because no one, you know, when someone could have said that back here and no one would have saw that COVID was coming and boom, changed the market as we know it. Federal Reserve pumped all this money into the markets and, and everything went crazy. So there's no way to predict the future. Uh, we play it level by level. It's as simple as that. All right. Um, discussion portion. I mean, that was sort of a little discussion right there. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll finish off by talking about the gaming thing because I know that's been hot the past couple days. Um, I, I think there's a big lapse um, and people don't understand that uh, gamers, like real gamers, because because that's what I was before I came into crypto. Uh, real real gamers don't, and especially young gamers, they don't really care about money. Uh, they they have work, right? They can work on the side, but when they come home to game, they're coming home to game, and they're not going to sacrifice their gaming experience just to make a couple bucks. Uh, not to mention that most of these games, or these quote unquote crypto games, are games where just whoever gets first and gets you know some special crab or some bullshit. Um, so there's, there's this big lapse right now between, uh, you know, crypto bros that think that they know what's best for gamers, but the gamers actually don't give a fuck. The gamers just want to play good games. The gamers don't care if they're rich or not. Um, and I mean, I speak from experience. Now look, back in 2011, I wish I was doing crypto because I'd be a multi, multi, multi millionaire. But the fact of the matter was I wasn't doing crypto. I was playing on, and now if you know ESCA, ESCA was Counter-Strike, a competitive Counter-Strike. Uh, they hosted servers in a league and whatnot. You may have heard about it because ESCA was using their client to mine Bitcoin off of everybody's computers for a couple years or a couple months or something. Um, but point being, I can tell you that back then I didn't care about making money at all. I just cared about getting what was back then it was called, I think, FPR, or ADR, you might my, my uh, or KDR, kills kills per round, kills per round or, or average damage round. Uh, my a, get my ADR up and my FPR up, and, and that that's what ESCA used to be all about was you know just just trying to compete and be the best player and play in the league with your teammates and whatnot. And I could give a fuck if I had money or not. I, I was eating Tyson chicken tenders and playing video games 16 hours a day, and, and that was my life. And I did not give a fuck about NFTs or making money off skins or any bullshit like that because that's real gamers don't care about that shit real gamers care about being competitive um, I mean you know I, I, like I said I, you know maybe I'm not the same as every other gamer um, you know I played high level counter-strike high level dota uh, for world of warcraft I was rank one on the entire ladder uh, for for one season uh, outside of that you know typical gladiator titles and whatnot um, but the thing is, is like, I, I never cared about money. And one day the, the switch flipped and I said, yo, you need to do something with your life and start making some money. And that's when I came into crypto. 
But as far as I'm concerned, the two separate things, there's crypto and there's gaming, and they're not one. And if you want them to be one, the only way they're going to be one is if you make really good games and then implement the crypto shit afterwards. Okay, so I'm not going to pretend that, you know, anyone who's playing these crypto games isn't having a good time, right? Maybe someone does enjoy those type of games. I know people who enjoy playing games like Farmville or, or some shit like that to where you're just, you know, it's a simple game uh, and, and it's calm and it's enjoyable. It's a grind, but, but people love that stuff and that's okay. But for the real gamers, for the billions of gamers that play Counter-Strike, Dota, Call of Duty, League of Legends, World of Warcraft, uh, you know, Player Battleground Unknown, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, I've never played that PUBG. Um, but, but for the real gamers, they don't care about this shit. And they're going to continue to not care about it. They care about playing good games. So by all means, if you're getting into the crypto game space and you want to be an investor, uh, you want to make some trades off of it, I 100% believe there's money to be made because it's a great narrative. Uh, Axies proved it. Uh, Death Eye Kingdoms has proved it. That there's that are, there is multiples there, and there's no problem with that. But don't fucking pretend that those games can replace Counter Strike or something because they can't. It's not even the same world. It's a completely different world. So it, it, we just call it for what it is. They're not really games. They're just like you know some grindy. It's a grindy quote-unquote flash game or something like that, or, or a dex hidden behind the fucking ruse of a game, and, and that's all it really is. So again, make money off these things, and and that's great. And there is money to be made off these things, but don't get tricked into thinking that there's some type of revelation here, because there's not. And I can tell you that as a real gamer, uh, I don't know what all these other fucking guys did before they did crypto, but none of them played games like me, or maybe only one percent of them did. So that's about it. Uh, hope you all have a great week. Uh, I'll talk to you next week. Peace out.